Duff Johnson, the CEO of the PDF Association. In this webinar, I want to show you around the PDF industry's meeting place, explain the various features, and encourage you to get involved. First, we should try and answer the question, why does the PDF Association even exist? And in order to answer that question, we have to talk about PDF. Now, I'll talk about PDF's core capabilities in a minute, but we have to first point out that whatever the reasons, PDF is intrinsic to a diverse range of industries. It's almost impossible to imagine how any of these industries would function without PDF. To some extent, everyone everywhere needs documents to organize their world. And in all of these cases, PDF is the final form document format of choice. There are many ways to measure how big PDF really is. Since Adobe first launched PDF in 1993, there have been thousands of implementations of the PDF format. Writers, parsers, readers, editors, manipulators, scrapers, scanners, validators, and more. Banks, law firms, government agencies, schools, private industry, they all maintain vast quantities of PDF documents. But how do we know that PDF is truly more relevant today than ever? We, we ask Google. So if we look at Google Trends, which tracks Mindshare by comparing searches for a given term against all searches everywhere, we learn some pretty interesting things. Now, happily, PDF is a pretty unique string of characters. If people search for the string PDF, it's very likely that they have a PDF file in mind in some way, and that's how they think of it. As we can see from this graph, interest in PDF continues to grow. Actually, it's kind of peaking right now. In fact, 2020 saw a new peak PDF in April. As one might, as one might expect, the worldwide surge in remote working resulted in a spike in interest in PDF doc documents and PDF technology. But how much mindshare does PDF have really compared to something really popular, you know, like, like iPhones? Of course, PDF is 20, 2020 is famous for many things, but, but did you know that 2020 is also the year that PDF gained as much mindshare as the iPhone? If one considers how the web has evolved since 2004, since the beginning of this graph, the fact that people search for PDF more than ever before, even relative to all Google searches, is remarkable. Part of what's great about PDF is that anyone can do it. It's a publicly available specification, the technology is royalty free, and there are thousands of open source implementations. PDF has been published since 1993 and 15 years later became standardized as ISO 32000. That's now an international standard uh, democratically managed by working groups that in fact the PDF Association administers. Okay, so let's come back to that. Why do we need a PDF, an industry association for PDF? PDF is a complex technology, and one of the reasons for a PDF association is to encourage awareness of PDF's many capabilities. It's not just a simple page description format. There's an extraordinary number of things that are possible with PDF. Many industries take advantage of these various things, and the industry association exists in part to help ensure that this information is, is uh, broadly disseminated. Another major purpose for our existence is to educate developers and end users on how to properly leverage this powerful and complex format. PDF, by its very nature, encourages cooperation. If one developer produces a PDF file that another developer cannot read with their viewer, then nobody's happy. Uh, and and the, the, the format is, the, uh, the application has failed in its purpose. So PDF vendors have a great uh, incentive to understand what each other are doing and, and achieve a common understanding of the format. And of course, the format extends, continues to extend and be improved through the development of, uh, through industry feedback and expertise. Uh, groups of, of developers and uh, stakeholders get together on a regular basis, both within PDF Association technical working groups and at the ISO level to discuss and, and, and debate uh, the next steps for PDF and determine the path forward. 
And these meetings are these meetings go on this they they happen in Munich they go on all around the world and in New York City they tend to look kind of the same way and in China. Now members of the PDF association can monitor or contribute to the ISO process pretty much as much or as little as they want. It's entirely up to them. Some members uh, take it as a entirely as a technical resource and they're very interested in the draft ISO documents and the uh, work of the, of the technical working groups. Other members are more interested in the marketing benefits that the PDF Association can offer. So the PDF Association is really the voice of PDF technology. Next, I'm gonna show you how to pick it up and use it. Okay, first let's look at the PDF Association's website at pdfa.org. And why don't we first take a look at the news section. The news section is where content, a lot of content from members and from the association uh, winds up as initially displayed for the world. Articles and other uh, featured news can be displayed up in the featured news section up here. Other content can be found either by PDF area of interest or by news type. So for example, we could look at PDF Association News. We could look at thought leadership articles, or we could look at member news. The events section of the website allows visitors to explore upcoming PDF Association, ISO, or commercial events posted by members. The resources page provides uh, access to publicly available resources published by the PDF Association and other organizations that are, that, with which we're associated. And they're organized by resource type. So for example, you could look at educational material and so on. You'll also discover the, you'll also find the discover section of the website, which provides content in German, and content oriented for, towards developers, towards users, and towards marketers of PDF technologies. A monthly newsletter includes updates in each of these areas. Okay, let's look at member products and services on pdfa.org. First, the member index lists members of the organization in the order in which they've been they've joined and of course you can search by members by different categories so product index which allows you to search by product sector for different types of solutions or by different features associated with pdf content and you can also of course search uh, by text for various products. Members are also welcome to post the services that they offer in the services showcase. And like the products showcase, there's various, meta, uh, various options to filter services for that purpose. Members are also welcome to post their case studies on pdfa.org. or their white papers as well. Okay, let's log into the PDF Association website as a member and check out the members only resources. All right, so our test user, Barbara, has just logged into the back end of pdfa.org and there's a lot of resources here available and I'm to the user and I'm now gonna give you a little tour. So first of all, we can see that Barbara's profile has not been completed for pdfa.org. She can easily click on the edit my profile link and she could provide additional text describing her, so biographical information, make sure that her first name and other information is up to date and correct. And she could, I'm gonna show you more about how to join a community in a moment, but then go ahead and submit her request and to update her profile. She could of course change her password as well. 
we're not going to bother to do that at this time. Now, well, let's come to the community area. Uh, right now, Barbara is subscribed to the PDF Reuse Technical Working Group. And so why don't we take a look at she uh, joining another um, community for her. So we're going to go to Join Communities. And maybe let's join the PDF Technical Working Group. Once Barbara's community request has been approved, as you can see here, she now has access to these various community internal resources, including, for example, this ballot. Let's take a look at the ballot very quickly. So this ballot um, allows a member to vote on the approval of this particular document, and they could go ahead and access the particular uh, draft of this ballot uh, this way, enter the ballot and so on to approve, to uh, contribute to this document. Going back over here, let's have a look at the kind of resources that are available directly to a community member. So this is the public page for the PDF Reuse Technical Working Group. And as you can see, once you're a member, once you're a logged in member of the association, you have access to internal community notes including meeting notes and project folder, and then access as well to the uh, to the listserv, to the archives of the listserv for that particular community. Okay, let's go back to the member area and check out the rest of the resources for PDF Association members. Past the community area, we come to the company area. And here you can see that this company, Mars Cycles, this is our test company on the website, has their description, so on, which is most recently updated in September. And the user could go ahead and update the description of this, of this member and change the featured image if needed on the website. Membership status is indicated just below the, in, the, in the company area. And you can also visit the PDF Association store to pay your membership dues or visit the member obligations page to understand the particulars of, uh, of, of requirements for PDF association members. Beyond that, you can see that there's a, there's a listing of colleagues with access to PDF association resources. And right now, Barbara and James Dale are the two employees of Mars Cycles who are listed in PDF association's website and have access to its resources. Either one of them can click the add a colleague button and fill out the form in order to add another one of their uh, colleagues from Mars Cycles to the PDF Association and give them access to the back end. The lead generation program is under development at this time, and we'll be announcing this to PDF Association members later on in 2020. The content area, as you can see, the, uh, the Mars Cycles team have not yet published any content on PDF, uh, PDFA.org. So let's have a quick look at that. Over here are the various ways in which you can get your membership, your, your content as a member on the website. So for example, if you posted a thought leadership article, you would, you would uh, be following the style guide and check here to say that you've done so. You'd add an email address, provide the body text of your post, an excerpt, a featured image, assign it to various PDF types if applicable, and then submit it. Your submission goes to the website editors who review it. They may get back to you with any questions or comments, but then it's otherwise published on the website in the news area that you've seen previously. And likewise, if you have news about your company, uh, product news and so on, you might go ahead and share your PDF re related news by adding your case study, your white paper or member news on this uh, via this form, adding the text and so on, uh, a featured image for your news, and adding the PDF type as, as before. Uh, likewise, you can also add case studies and white papers to the site and post events. Uh, if you have your own webinars, your own in-person events, live events coming up, uh, the PDF Association website gives you a facility to post these and have these included on our member, um, on the events page of our website. And all the relevant information, is available here to be captured and then uh, and then placed on the site. 
Uh, next up is the ISO document section. This is particular, particularly of interest to our technical members uh, and developers who are members of the PDF Association. Uh, it's important to note that all the ISO documents uh, that are made available to PDF Association members are only for the use of those members and cannot be shared with anyone other than PDF Association members or members of the ISO community. And all that, those rules are, are covered in the membership obligations, which is linked to right here. Uh, the ISO Documents Archive is a facility uh, provided to members, which allows you to access all of the, uh, all of the documents that ISO committees uh, produce that are tracked by the PDF Association. So there are many different ISO working groups producing content of, of interest to PDF Association members, and these ISO projects um, can include, uh, you know, there, there, there are many of them here, right? And you can find agendas, you can find drafts, liaison reports, uh, votes, resolutions, and so on in this section of the website. Likewise, uh, also for the use of uh, developers, uh, we maintain documents on the website uh, to track, for example, current ISO work related to PDF. And you can see uh, the status of the various ISO communities here and what they're working on, what they're doing. And you can also check out the page maintained by Peter Wyatt, uh, ISO project uh, co-leader for ISO 32000 in which he tracks normative references in the specification and provides up-to-date links to these various resources. Uh, further, uh, members are welcome to access and download a collection of member logos uh, that are provided for their use in promoting their affiliation with the PDF Association. And of course, if you need to reach out and get support from your PDF Association team at any time, we have a variety of ways for you to reach out and contact us. Let's briefly review PDF Association membership benefits, starting with technical benefits. Our working groups are populated by volunteer developers and product managers from member organizations and consultants. We develop formal notes, test suites, educational content, and other content of value to the industry as a whole. As a standards developer for ISO TC171 SC2, the PDF Association is uniquely positioned to assist our members in benefiting from and contributing to international standards development for PDF technology and we provide an interface to the standards development process for PDF and PDF subsets. Technical benefits are centered on the technical working groups, or TWGs, that define and develop the PDF Association's technical documents, test suites, and so on. Each working group has distinct resources and listservs. Some are simply occasional discussion forums. Others are engaged in twice monthly meetings on deadline to develop new documents. It's all driven by volunteers with the professional staff providing guidance and support. The PDF Association's efforts in the marketplace are designed to make every flower bloom. We provide our members with events, lead generation, and other types of opportunities to help get their message out. Our staff is ready to listen to your ideas on how to fertilize the industry's flower beds. We are here to help you succeed. To summarize, the PDF Association exists, as the board's statement explains, to provide awareness and understanding of ISO standards-based PDF technology and to help the PDF technology community develop solutions and drive innovation in this critical file format. So at this point, I'm sure you're probably wondering, how do I get involved? Membership in the PDF Association is open to a wide variety of organizations and individuals. At present, there are over 116 PDF Association member companies from over 22 countries around the world. In all cases, to begin the process of joining the PDF Association, all you have to do is fill out the form. Membership dues are assessed annually. The PDF Association is a small nonprofit with a very small staff. Membership dues allow us to continue to serve the industry with a platform for technical discussions and resolutions and a promotional counterpart to help move business along. Visit the membership benefits page to review the various types of PDF Association membership. Membership fees are based on worldwide company headcount. 
There's no limit to the number of employees that may access members-only resources on pdfa.org. Let's take any questions you may have. Okay, so, well, hopefully you found uh, the presentation useful and um, see what questions that you have. The question pod is open and I'm delighted to take any questions that you have at this time. Maybe I should turn on my webcam. If I knew how. Anyhow, that's probably less important than actually attempting to answer some questions. Uh, great, so let's see here. More about promotional possibilities. Um, well, there are, um, uh, the, the association operates a variety of events, of events and also allows its members to post case studies, uh, their, their own webinars, their own recordings, articles, thought leadership, events, and other content. And we are, and just as importantly, we're open to other suggestions from our members as to what we can do to improve marketing opportunities for our members. The basic criteria for marketing activities conducted by the association is that whatever it is has to be something that's good for the industry as a whole. We can't really engage in activities that are that are particularly spe uh, that are specific to one vertical or so on. We need to make sure that they're something that benefit all, all members. Okay, so next question. For example, can we promote our web our webinars on your email database? Absolutely. If you post, if uh, PDF Association members. Um, uh, we, we'll be able to post webinars. Uh, number one, all the webinars of this October PDF Fest will be posted. Previous webinars have been posted, or, or I should say presentations, have been posted on YouTube. And very soon we'll be bringing along a new uh, option, a presentations archive on pdfa.org uh, that will be a, 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 an archive of, of, of the videos that have been, or the presentations going back to, I think 2012 or a little earlier, about PDF, um, including all of our more recent events, and they will include expanded options for members to post their own webinars um, in a categorized fashion and integrate them into the rest of their content on pdfa.org. Um, next question, Duff, could you describe the liaison membership options? So yes, so li liaison membership is intended for nonprofits and, and most particularly government agencies, but also educational institutions and other non-commercial organizations who have a particular interest in monitoring or uh, indeed working on the development of or con contributing to the development of PDF technology uh, specifications. So, um, uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, numerous uh, U.S. government agencies that are liaison members, uh, a couple of academic organizations, some some nonprofits, and uh, we've done a variety of work with 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 a variety of these liaisons. So, for example, uh, in in collaboration with uh, the National Archives and the Library of Congress, we're currently developing a, a draft specification for email archiving using PDF uh, with the Twain Working Group. Um, another nonprofit industry group, we developed the PDF raster specification and so on. Let's see, so next question, do you open, mem uh, do I open numbers, the website uh, pages? We haven't published that information to date. Um, um, we can certainly consider that. And that's, that's something actually we haven't really discussed so, so uh, too much too far, uh, so far. So but that's a good idea. We Perhaps we should do that and I'll, I'll take that idea back to the board. Um, next question, what's your relationship with Adobe? Uh, great question. So Adobe, of course, uh, created or invented the PDF format back in 1993 and turned it over to the ISO in 2007. Uh, PDF became an ISO standard in 2008 and, uh, and an open published, uh, it was already published, but it became an open democratically managed standard at that time. Uh, Adobe is of, is of course a partner member of the PDF Association along with about 10 or 11 other companies at this time 
and Adobe has, uh, like those other companies, a seat on the board of the PDF Association. But um, and that's it. It's it's one of the industry players. It's obviously a major player. They have a great deal of technical expertise and so on. But uh, Adobe is is a part of this of, of the PDF uh, universe. It's not the PDF universe. And so uh, we're we're delighted. Uh, we work very closely with Adobe, um, and uh, and we collaborate with them, and they collaborate with us on, on on the things that we do. And numerous Adobe personnel are involved in our in uh, PDF Association projects. Any other questions? I see somebody asked how how much it costs to be a member of the PDF Association. Um, the membership fees are organized as a basis of the number of employees worldwide for a given company. And as an example, a company's up to 25 employees. Uh, the current uh, membership dues are 1,500 euros for one year. Do we have fresh statistics for the pre PDF marketplace? Uh, we, we don't have particularly fresh statistics at this time. PDF uh, marketplace is a is it's a it's a challenging um, environment in which to collect statistics because um, people well quite frankly most of uh, most of the people using PDF don't think of themselves in any way as participants in a PDF industry. Um, PDF is 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 so ubiquitous, so commonplace, so so characteristic that it is just simply wrapped into is considered as a component of uh, other kinds of solutions such as um, um, uh, digital signatures or records management and so on. Um, so, but that is, it, it, so it's an ongoing challenge to develop um, interesting or, or useful statistics about uh, the extent of PDF technology in the, in the marketplace. That it is something that we are, we are thinking about. And we're, um, again, and we're, we're very open to collaborating with our members and have done so before, members and, and third parties to develop uh, interesting ways to try and understand what the scope is for PDF technology solutions. 